Yeah. This is um, me redoing uh, a blog post that I wrote. Uh, that blog post in turn is me redoing someone else's blog post. Uh, so uh, hopefully this isn't too much reused material, but um, I thought it was an interesting concept. Um, and it seems relevant to some of the stuff that at least we were talking about in the, the other breakout room. So uh, the workshop on the storefront. So I took this term from, um, there's a designer slash uh, front-end engineer called Brad Frost. Uh, and for sort of anyone who's unfamiliar with the world of like front-end and building websites, uh, he, he does a lot of work on design systems. And design systems are where like a, a tool that you would use as a company in order to help you build digital products better. Uh, so you'd have, for example, like a component library. So rather than having to rebuild a button every time, you would just grab it out of your design system. And the same thing for like, which fonts do I use? Like which, what spacing should I have? What colors do I pick? All that is sort of decided upfront in the design system. Uh, and Brad Frost makes this distinction between uh, sort of two elements of the design system. Uh, one is the workshop and one is the software. So here in this blog post uh, is the uh, is a picture of his wife's uh, workshop. She's a jewelry maker. And it's very messy. Uh, as you can see, it's well lit and there's lots of tools available. And it's very practical. Uh, but this is not what gets shown to the customer at the end. The, the storefront is, you know, like a pristine physical shop or like an online store presence where everything is nicely presented. Um, so for front-end world, uh, this, this exists as well. So this is some, some I'm a, I'm a front-end engineer and this is some of the work that I've done recently where we're building a button. Um, and this is our, um, workshop. So this is a tool called Storybook, which allows you to build components of a website without actually putting them in the website. So here's, here's what it looks like at the end. Uh, this is the nicely presented uh, screen. Um, and you can see like the start from the beginning is like what, what we end up with. Uh, but it's, it's a lot harder to build it in this context when you're trying to work out different edge cases and just explore things. You don't necessarily want things um, to be at that high polished standard, like straight away. So building in a tool like this allows you to be a bit messy, a bit more creative, explore different possibilities uh, before you sort of have the actual product at the end. Um, and just sort of like Brad has mapped uh, his wife's work onto front end. I'm now sort of mapping front end onto note taking. Uh, and I found this this sort of distinction between workshops and storefronts to be uh, quite a useful one in sort of being a bit less stressed about hand taking notes and deciding which tools to pick um, and sort of just getting started. So I used to uh, sort of just use Evernote and got a bit into a bit of difficulty in that you take notes from I don't know, a blog post you'd read and then you'd have like a blog post you're writing in the same place and it gets quite confusing. Like what's the, like how, how much effort should I be putting into things at each different stage? Um, and so what I started to do is, um, Split, split it out a little bit more. So I sort of explicitly, even if it's not sort of directly in the tool, have this in the back of my mind. Am I um, doing a workshop or am I uh, building a storefront? So for me, the main, the main workshops are um, Evernote, like dumping blog posts and notes into there. Uh, Rome, more recently, having a very like exploratory, messy, uh, it's like unpolished experience. Uh, physical paper and then once I'm sort of more happy with an idea I'm trying to convert those into either like polished notion pages and templates or uh, a sort of a, or, or a blog post uh, I also like I, I think this distinction doesn't work just within or sort of jumping between different tools but it also works quite well within tools and the main way I see this is sort of in notion where I might start with um, quite a messy template. But what ends up happening over time is that you refine it a little bit, you refine it a little bit and you polish it and polish it and you um, have this spectrum across, across which you move. Uh, so I have like a decision-making journal. So this is um, 
me being a bit over the top about big decisions I make in my life. And so I, at the moment, like my polished version is uh, like I have uh, like a database and I have a bunch of fields on them and I review them and have reminders and like compare and like see how well I've made my decisions. Uh, but originally that was just um, some bullet points. Uh, and you can collect the bullet points of ideas into like a uh, more nicely formatted bullet point list. And then in Notion you can have like toggles and dropdowns and then that goes into a page and then maybe that goes into a database. Uh, and you can sort of iteratively improve things much like uh, I suppose progressive summarization works, but uh, uh, with your tool as well. Um, yeah, I guess this is the main thing. Um, not worrying about finding the perfect tool. You're allowed to have a messy workspace. You're allowed to um, have something that's just like easy to get started with. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's a concept that's been quite helpful to me. So that's my tool, Kepler.